What's happening? This is Paulie. And this is Stevie. And we're from the band On Off, and you're listening to The Loud Spot! With Sebastian. woo hoo hoo Oh, no! Oh, no! See you later. What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Loud Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian Cosby, right out of Oklahoma City. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. I am hanging out today with an awesome band on off. What's up, guys? What's up, brother? What were you laughing about over there? Oh, the intro is just amazing. (laughs) Thank you, guys. You guys are in California now. You're from originally Ireland. Tell me a little bit about your band before we get into why you guys moved over here. I'm the only original. I'm Stevie. I play drums. Uh, I'm the only original member uh, <laughs> left in the band. It started a long time ago, probably 20 years ago at this stage. Wow. Um, Paulie came along probably a few years after that. Um, now we're talking about when we were kids here. Like we're, we're in kids. our 30s now, so this isn't like last fucking year or anything. It's a long time. But well, we've been kicking it all over the world, me and him, and then uh, our bass player will come be here tonight, Dave. Hello, Dave. Yeah, he joined the band, let's say, close to 15 years ago now, right? Yeah, so it's been, yeah, about 12, 13 years ago, and it's been the same. Has your, uh, style, has your style changed from when you first started playing the, the music 20 years ago till today? The style of sound and the band? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah totally. Changed. You know, I, I knew on off. Before I was in the band, I was actually that roadie. Um, but yeah, me and Stevie were best mates and we, we shared an apartment. And um, yeah, I guess they needed a guitar player to do some big touring. They got tour support with Fall Out Boy, big American band. And um, yeah, they got they asked me to play lead guitar. And then from then, I, I ended up joining the band. But um, the sound then was like very similar to Fall Out Boy, you know, pop, punk, rock. So it's so it's yeah it's definitely changed quite a bit since 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 then. So why the move from Ireland? No, I, before I even ask that, I I did see that you guys had a big following in Germany, uh, like in Europe, right? Yeah, you know, on off had two albums out before I joined the band, and they had a different singer, and um, you know I joined the band as a lead guitar player, and then you had two albums out, and then we made the third. And the thing was, with the first two records, they kind of did everything you could do in in Ireland and started breaking territory in England. But I kind of wanted to go to Europe, and so did Stevie. So we got some opportunities to go to Germany. And then um, basically it all happened because the biggest punk rock band in Holland, they're called the Haida Rogers, Uh um, they basically contacted our management and asked if they could come on a tour support around Ireland because they never played there. And, you know, in return, they were going to swap. It's with a tour swap. We were, we were the biggest in the, that genre in Ireland, so it would make sense for them not to lose money the first time there. And they would come and open for us and return the favour. Yeah. But, we, you know, Sebastian, when Ireland is a small country, and then when we were on tour there, we were pulling in, like, you know, five to six... To maybe a thousand people, five six hundred to maybe right. a thousand people, and then um, you know when we went on that tour with the Dutch band, the Hyde Rogers, we were playing double, if not triple, that every night. So it was a nice first tour of Europe to go out and play to two thousand plus a night. But um, I guess that kind of opened up a lot of doors for us. So we decided to focus our next record on on, on Europe, but. We were it like we were nineteen twenty. <laughs> yeah, you know, at one stage we were sponsored by Jägermeister, and we were fucked up. All the time. <laughs> That's and, pretty uh, cool. Yeah, it was cool, but 
you know, our livers didn't like that. <laughs> what? What? But, um, it was great actually because it was some some places in the contract when you'd show up to the show to be we were a four piece band at the time so we'd have four fresh ice bottles of Jägermeister waiting backstage. Oof. Oh God! With a with a tray of uh, Red Bull with a tray of Red Bull beside us. So <laughs> We were getting pretty wired, you know. Oh my <laughs> god! So what? When you guys decided to move to California, um, from did you guys go from Ireland to California? Yeah, we flew uh, the three of us and my dog. Okay, so when you moved there, why did you choose? Did you, are you guys in the Bay Area or Sacramento Valley? Um, well, we came to Yuba City actually, north of the Sac Valley. Okay, so why did you guys choose to go there of all places? Um, you know, at the time, it was connection with family and friends. Um, I've been coming out here back and forth before we came out with the band. And, um, you know, Sacramento, the Sacramento Valley there, it's in the center of the West Coast Touring Circuit. So um, it just made sense to, uh, you know, station ourselves right in the middle. So, you know, we could play Seattle and be back in our beds within the same you know, 24 hours. Yeah, you guys are in a great area over there for music. I, you know, I'm from that area. And so, yeah. where you guys, the bands, the music scene is just so alive over where you guys live, especially for your style of music. You know, I think it's awesome. Yeah, well, you know, when we came here, I thought it was actually going to be a lot, you know, more thriving. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess um, <laughs> you make your own path in this music industry, especially in America. There's a lot of money here and... Um, you know, if you don't have it, you can find it. And uh, when you find it, make sure your act is all polished because, uh, you know, they can see the cracks very easily in this, this side of the industry. Oh, um, yeah. Well, when I get when I go to uh, when I go visit my parents, I'll hit you guys up and we'll hang out or whatever. That'd be really fun. Vacaville. Huh? Yeah, Vacaville. Yep. My parents live in Vacaville. Shout out to Bryce. Chris Campbell. I know you probably do know Chris. Uh, maybe if I saw him. Chris Carroll is another close friend of ours. And he's a, if you know Chris Carroll, he's a roadie. He works with everyone. Does he know? That's cool. I mean, I know Malcolm Tent's coming out with the new album. I'm super looking forward to that album. That's coming yeah, out yeah. soon, so. Uh, Matty, oh, Matty Go is in Malcolm Yeah, Matt, yeah, he is. Yeah, Matt, Matt, Matty. Matty Go has done sound for us a couple of times. He's great. <laughs> yeah, Matty's cool, man. I like all of him a lot of, a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> in the back of the back of days we found yeah, to Oklahoma the, keep yeah, that keep, keep, back keep that fire burning came out in 2017 I think so I think that's right yeah 2017 we released a record Reborn was was keep that fire burning the like the biggest fan favorite from that album because that's my I love this song well it was the opening track off the album and you know it was one of the first songs we wrote here when we came to America because at the time, back in Ireland, <laughs> it's funny, I haven't thought about this in a long time, but <laughs> in, in, in Ireland, there was a crazy thing going on about uh, water, charging our people for water, and considering our country is completely surrounded by water. <laughs> it just didn't make sense, you know, to right. charge us to use water. Um, so I wrote a song called Keep That Fire Burning. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna play. It, we're gonna play it right now, and then we're gonna get, get into some of your newer stuff, and then we're gonna go back to 2017. So, yeah, we're, oh, and then we also want to talk about Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, yes. everybody! We're gonna talk oh, about yeah. some some traditions coming up. Keep yeah, that great. keep that fire burning with the band on off. It's all capital letters O N O F F. Let's do it.
there you go. Keep that fire burning. That song is so fucking awesome. Like the e- the energy, the 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 fast pace. I, what kind of genre would you even call that? I you know um, alternative punk rock. I know yeah. that's not really a genre. That, no, that, that's what I call it. It's an alternative mixed with punk rock. That's exactly like exactly what I would have said. Yeah, right on, man. Exactly. You know, we we love that tune, and it's uh, we only play it rarely live. You know, if it's a good night, we'll whip it out. And if we know the fans are there, you know, we whip it out to them. So those of you who are listening right now and don't see it, we're looking at Sebastian on the video and he air drums the shit out of that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, so. sometimes you just got to whip it out. Yeah, oh, yeah, whip, yeah, whip it out. <laughs> so it is Thanksgiving. Do you guys have any traditions for Thanksgiving? Do, like what's Thanksgiving like in Ireland compared to America? It's a normal Thursday and everybody... So Thanksgiving in Ireland um, has never been really a thing, you know. And uh, we were never invited anywhere. We don't celebrate it really. But then I suppose as you grow older, like I had American friends in my teens that would celebrate it, that would their that, that their family would celebrate it. But it was done just for them. It's it's a thing here in America, you know. You know, it's kind of funny and it is and it isn't. But it's Saint Paddy. D D Y. So short you know, Patrick. It's something that like sometimes you know, for instance, Halloween is an Irish holiday. That came from Sam Samhain. 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 <laughs> yeah, you know, so that came from Ireland and you know, look where that's at now, you know. So, so do, you, do you guys celebrate Thanksgiving now living in America? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Stevie's gonna cook up a, a beautiful ham soaked in Coca-Cola. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Um, what else are you doing there? Oh, a French onion soup. Yeah. French onion soup, mashed potatoes. Carrots. Mashed potatoes. Carrots. <laughs> Potato <laughs> whales. <laughs> how, how long have you guys been in? When did you guys move to America? What year was that? 2013, I think. Wasn't it? Or 14? April 2013. Did it take some adjusting, like, to the holidays? Like, we got 4th of July, Thanksgiving. Did it take yeah. some like uh, the people in general are probably very different than Irish people? Well, the, the, the main difference that I realize every holiday that's celebrated in Ireland, there's a, a holiday directly the next day. So, like, it doesn't matter what day St. Patrick's Day falls on, it could be a Monday or a Tuesday or a Wednesday. The very next day is automatically a bank holiday, we call it. And a bank holiday means the banks are closed, closed everything else is, is shut down. So essentially, it's, a, it's just a hangover day, you know? So <laughs> any day right. recovered, any, any holiday in Ireland has a recover day after it. It's automatic holiday. So, but over here, Christmas Day, you know, I, I think Thanksgiving is, is a little bit bigger, I think, almost than Christmas, you know, sometimes because everybody would rather be home for Thanksgiving than, you know, Christmas. You know, that's what I've had noticed a lot of people go back to work the day after Christmas here, uh, whereas back in Ireland, in Europe, England, Ireland, you get like two weeks vacation over the whole period. Wow. You don't go back to the new year, you know? They should so, implement um, that here. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you get a little here. bit more time to spend with your family. But, you know, we will celebrate Thanksgiving. I, I was invited out to... Um, super close friends of ours tomorrow too, but I don't think I'm going to make it. But I'll give them a shout out, Johnny and Kathy, because they probably listen. But I used to live with them and we'd celebrate Thanksgiving for the last couple of years. But, um, you know, it's a day to eat and be merry. So for us, that's Christmas Day. We, we cook the turkey on Christmas Day and um, we have the big dinner that day. So I don't know, most families here in America tend to uh, go back in their shell Christmas Day. No, I think it's I think I think that's gonna be very interesting with COVID this year as far as the holidays go and people and family. Like I know my parents aren't doing shit. They're not doing a damn thing. Yeah, uh yeah. you know, and, and that's fine. And I'm going over to the in laws and stuff like that. We're gonna have some fun. This is the one of the first years in a long time we haven't done Thanksgiving at my house here in Oklahoma. I usually invite a bunch of friends over. This year we're not we're not doing that. We're going over to the in laws house, so my wife's gonna love that. She's tired of doing all the cooking and all that. It's like, it's like, yes, because she stresses out about it, you know. She's like, ah, I don't want so this. So this year will be be a little bit easier on her. Although we did make some food tonight. I want to ask you guys. So you guys have toured all around. You guys have been to Europe, 
from Ireland, you played in America. What is your, what's like the biggest tour that you've ever been on or, or show or festival that you've played that you really enjoyed? We've played a lot of stuff. We've been on a lot of tours. The longest tour we've ever been on was about 60 dates. And that was all over Europe, probably about 12 different countries. Oh, shit. Was that hard on you? You know, we were young, dumb, and full of cum, so... <laughs> and Jägermeister. And Jägermeister. And Jägermeister so, and Red Bull. You know, we didn't really, give, didn't really give a rat's ass about the recovery process because, you know, you could slam another shot and your back feeling good. There was one specific show that I'll never forget, and we all agree. We played this festival in Germany called the Crack on Back Festival. And um, it was while we had a week off, or a couple of weeks off, actually. And then we flew to Germany to just specifically to play this show. I remember meeting the guys in the airport super early, and we off we flew with our crew to Germany, and, and we were picked up and drove directly to the festival site. But we arrived at about noon, and um, we ended up getting really drunk. And we weren't supposed to perform until, like, I think 11 o'clock that oh, night. Oh, jeez. You know, we ended up, me and Stevie went down to the campsite and ended up hanging out with some fans. And then our road manager came and found us and stuck us in a shower. The reason why we remember this festival is because... When we talked to those fans in the, the campsite area, they were explaining to us that um, this is like a, a green a festival. Green, a green festival. We were like, yeah, yeah, green. What do you mean? And they were like, oh, well, it is included in the ticket price if you clean up after your shizer. So uh, we were like, well, so if you clean your mess up, they give you some of your money back. And we were like, yeah. And we, we didn't really take much heed of what they were saying. Right. So we went back to our nice hotel rooms and got washed. <laughs> <laughs> and then we came back and played the festival. And then... Did that sober you up kind of when you're on stage playing the show? Like, did that kind of sober you up a little bit just doing that as well? Oh, well, the showers. The, the cold yeah, showers. from memory, though, too, of that stage. I look back on it and I do remember parts of it. And <laughs> we know from watching video and stuff that it was... <coughs> excuse me spot on but we did our job but we, yeah, went, we weren't yeah. drunk we were drunk that day but we weren't drunk that night but um, we got drunk after again so we got drunk twice in one day it's allowed we're Irish but, um, <laughs> right so, right I was going to say show. you're Irish you can do whatever you want the was the we uh, hung out and it was great everybody was happy so we knew we didn't fuck up and um, we ended up going back to the hotel that we were once in to sober up again and the next morning when we woke up for breakfast we were like did anybody get paid so we looked at our tour manager or whatever and I did you get paid and I, no we, we have to go back to the site and when we went back there wasn't one we passed it about three times we did a 180 and then flipped another bitch you know to the site that and there was nothing there no dirt like no there trash and no, tennis, no stages no no, anything. So the Germans are really efficient when it comes to cleaning up their own mess, you know? Right. That was the deal with the ticket. You got you got your campsite and it was sprayed out on the ground. You got your little grid. And the quicker and cleaner that you were, you would get money back. That is so interesting how other countries work so differently. Like I'm sure place to place is... Very different. I do want to say you said a very fantastic word that I haven't heard in a long time. I don't think it's said in Oklahoma. Maybe it is. You said flip a bitch. That means make a fucking U-turn. And I don't think people in Oklahoma say it. I, I, dude, you guys live in California now, so you're picking up the California lingo. Flipping a bitch is making a fucking U-turn. FYI. <laughs> just, just, so, just, so, just so everybody knows. Look, I want to talk about the song you just came out with on 420. Oh, shit. Well, yeah, we came out, We, you know, when we're traveling around California, which we love, and um, which is the bare place of some amazing rap music, and, you know, you got that East Coast, West Coast thing. Uh-huh. And we, we grew up with that being very heavily media covered growing up in Ireland in our teens. So I guess me and Stevie always wanted to do a track with a rapper on it, and then... Um, you know, no better place to find one in, than in California. And That's right. 
We ended up defending the Dupree before we even, you know, talked about the track. We we hung out and uh, his girl Desiree, which is a super close friend, and these people are family now to us, you know. But um, yeah, Dupree unbelievably came on board with that song. I can't believe it. And you know, I know we only sent you the track before the pod aired, but yeah, when you get your ears wrapped around it. He does such an amazing salute to Ireland. And, um, you know, I'm honoured that he's been involved in that song. I love uh, I love when, when rock artists do songs with rap artists because it really draws the two worlds together. Really, it's both entertainment and to be yeah. able to do that, to be, to be able to collaborate is awesome. Uh, you know, recently, I've, I actually reached out to some hip-hop management teams and I'm going to start playing some hip-hop on my podcast <clears throat> starting in January. Or January, we're going to do some groups. And then in December, I actually have a management, uh, a, a lady named Ashley who's going to be on the podcast. And she manages some some um, some rap artists. And, I, you know, the culture, man. Just pop culture in general. If it sounds good, I want to play it. You guys doing this. And what, what's what's the rap artist's names? Or what's his name? Dupree the Bay Bully. Dupree the Bay Bully. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's his name. And you guys recorded this, put it out 420. We were actually supposed to put it out on uh, on St. Patrick's Day, which is the 17th of March. And we were booked to play the Hard Rock Casino on, um, here in Sacramento and uh, COVID. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, dun, dun, dun. I will never forget what day St. Patrick's Day is. You know why? It's your birthday? My mom's birthday. Oh, and oh. and and her name's Patty. <laughs> really? Like T-T-Y. She's like the only Puerto Rican named Patty. Yeah, P-A-T-T-Y. She's like the only Puerto Rican named Patty. She, I don't think she likes it that much. <laughs> yeah, nice. Well, yeah. Um, you know, Closer is a great track. And yeah, go out and, go out and listen. If you're, if you're listening to the pod and you've never heard of the band, Dupree's music, his, his own personal stuff's amazing too. And um, it was great. We, we tried our best not to do Linkin Park. <laughs> it does know? not sound like Lincoln Park at all. In fact, I'm going to yeah. reach out to him sometime probably this week see if he wants to get on the podcast, play some of his music since he does music with you guys. I'm going to play Closer right now. This is On Off, and oh my God, I swear to God, I spelled On Off with a slash between the On and the Off. Who? I, I can't be the only one who's ever done that. I can't be the only no, one. No, you're not the only one. Yeah, no, no. Paulie corrected me, and I was like, oh, fuck. And I even have the music on my phone, and I know it there's no slash. But I just I put a slash. <laughs> I figured it probably does. This is closer. We got the band on off. This is a rap rock song, but not like you would think. This is quite different. We're gonna play it right now. Now I'm 
I'm rocking with my Irish side, I'm kind of white. Love it or hate it, this ain't something that you kind of like. On off in the young said it's time to write. I reply, yo, I got some fucking dynamite. And I'm ready to rumble. Thug at heart, you're humble. You hear us loud and clear, never one to mumble. We in the end zone, fight one, cause this team don't fumble. So, check it, homie, one, two, one, two. It's your call, what is you gonna do? Don't act like you're deaf, man. I know you hear the drum and bass. And the guitar woke you up like you got something to say, snitch. Never thought you'd hear some shit like this, cuz. Good nigga rockin' with an Irish limp, bruh. Haters gon' say that we done switched up. But honestly, I told you that we don't give up. Cause we came here to bust the groove. This is for the fans wanting something new. But if you don't like this, nigga, fuck you. Two, yeah, uh, that's how we sound like. song rips man you, you like that one there's huh? a little well yeah because i like rap music also so uh, you know i like a little bit of everything so what's right. cool about that is i like the little dj action at the end and i like there's a little bit of metal in that song in that last yeah. verse it kind of screams a little bit and then i don't care that pulling me closer that song fucking rips man like that right. song is the fucking jam right there everyone go on spotify Go on your Apple, fucking download that song. I know I'm going to download it after this podcast is over and listen to it like 20 times tomorrow. <laughs> and then I'll be tired of hearing it. I'm never going to play it again. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's stuck in your head then, you know? It's stuck. Yeah, it's really good. What gave you guys the idea to collab? I know you guys wanted to do something with the rap artist, but like, was that, did, did somebody else bring that attention to you or was it just like, hey, this popped in your head one day, let's go find a rap artist, and you just happen to know somebody through friends. Well, before we came here, um, we had this rehearsal space on the coast of Ireland, and, you know, I, I came up with the riff, the guitar riff. Actually, I feel like I came up with it when I was younger again, but um, I always knew, like, it's not something that I want to sing over, you know? Right. But I guess when we came here... You know, we moved out to a place, a little town called Sutter, and um, there's a lot of country rappers out there <laughs> kind of spawned an idea for it. But, um, yeah, Dupree, I love Dupree because he's like a he's like a cocktail of Tupac and Dre, you know, with the, 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 the humour of Snoop and Eminem, you know? Dude, that song is, the way it's put together... When you come in and sing on the chorus and he does the verse, Hi. that's really the way the rap, if you do a rap and rock song, you really need to have the rapper do the verse and the singer for the band do the chorus. That's the yeah. way it should be because when you do a chorus, it's going gonna, it's gonna to represent your voice and your singing and the chorus fits that and the verse is about the lyrics, right? Yeah, exactly, so yeah. you guys did a fantastic job of putting that together. I mean, it sounds, that's one of the best duos of rap and rock uh, artists together I've ever heard in my life. I'm not even fucking lying, dude. That's another guy. Thank you. Well, we, we need to get it out there more. You know, uh, COVID, well, we, we did an amazing video. It's on YouTube if you go to On Off Music TV. But um, there's a great fun video we did. But um, on on Facebook, which has changed the rules and changed it up there recently, but before all of that, when people could actually share music and support bands, I think we got close to a half a million views of the video. So wow. it kind of got out there. But the thing is, is um, you know, global radio marketing, how, how do you do it nowadays? When It's like, how do you promote something that's happy and a good vibe when there's so much shit going on? And it's like, we, did, we didn't want to force it down anybody's neck, you know? Well, once I get once I get a couple million subscribers, I'll have you back on the podcast. I'll have you back yeah, on. Right on, man. Hey, <laughs> We'll come on anytime. But, you know, the thing is, is um, it's funny, as you say, the verse with the rap and the chorus with the, the rock singing and stuff. You know, Dupree, we're probably going to end up doing an EP 
with Dupree, and, and that's the first song from it. Um, we're recording a new album right now, but, you know, as much as I'd love them, love them to feature on it, we, we kind of agreed a couple of months back that, you know, we'll get together and do do a five or six track EP. You need just, to you need do a whole entire EP with him and you guys. Yeah. And that would be a really, honestly, there's no one else that's done that, that as, as far as I know. Um, yeah. that, that, you know, a lot of rock bands have a rap artist like Jay-Z did that thing with Linkin Park. Yeah, uh, I think Korn's done some stuff uh, with some rap bands. I, this is actually like uh, even System of a Down has done uh, some some rap artists on, but it's like one song. It's called one song. Like System of a Down does a song called Shame uh, that came out a long time ago. But there's no more than just that song. Yeah, that's and, it. You know, I want to funk it up with Dupree too. I'm a producer of music, and you know, all of the members of On Off have different influences. And if Stevie was left at the command of the studio. I'm sure he'd come out with some amazing productions. And um, when we worked together, that's what we come out with. Closer was totally a collaboration of every member of the band. Um, but the thing about it is, is with, with doing an uh, EP with Dupree, I wanted to continue that way. I think we're on off. We have a sound that um, we, we're still trying to get out, you know? And it's... Um, very, very original sound. You guys really don't sound like and, you know, and I know a lot of my listeners hear me say this all the time, but it's so true. I, I get a lot of bands on the podcast that don't really sound like really anybody else, and you guys really don't sound like anybody else. Even with, with, your, with your music from you know uh, that we just played to keep that fire burning, to especially this song, there's just not a lot you can relate it to. It's just yourself. It's your own sound, yeah. and that's that's awesome that you guys have that. Well, that's the thing with the, even the new album. We we just got out of the studio there. We were. In for two weeks, which we lived in the studio in Sacramento, and we're recording our new album with Brian Wheat from Tesla. He's the bass player. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna talk about that here in just a little bit. Don't ruin, don't ruin it yet. Don't ruin it yet. Sure. Well, I'm just saying. You know, um, (laughs) the process is a lot different to what we're doing with Brian than what I'd love to do with Dupree. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm sure it's completely different. It's completely different. That's like it's like A and B. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It, there, there's different. I think what you're doing with Dupree, I think you should stay with that. That song meshes very well. Did you already have the lyrics for the chorus? Like, so when he wrote the lyrics, did you yeah. write to his lyrics or did he write to your lyrics? You know, he came in to we had we had this warehouse we were renting, and um, he, he came in literally with a couple of ideas that he had. And we, the, the chorus came later, you know? um, okay. But the, fun, the funny thing is about the chorus, it, uh, I, I remember Dupree kind of had his first and second, bit of a second verse wrote. And then we, this, we got together for like our second set of rehearsals with it. And then I, I feel like I just shouted the chorus really <laughs> hard, you know? It's good. And, it's good. You know, I'm like, go again, go again. I feel like I have some noise. <laughs> And you know, so a lot, a lot of songwriting, a lot of the good stuff, uh, especially with rock and roll, happens in the room with the band. If, if you try and write on the couch, um, I feel like it's a false intent once you get into the rehearsal space, because you know you were on the couch, and it depends how um, you can separate your mind with playing like an, a little shitty acoustic guitar, all the press in the corner, then going in with a full on rock band, you know. Uh, we we try and not write that song, you know the sad song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm laughing because I'm looking at Stevie right now, and I'll tell him why I'm laughing when I play <laughs> when I play this song. I want to play. I want to play. Time to let it go, and then we are going to get into um, the new album that we're yeah, baby. we're going to. Of course, we're going to talk about that. Come on, dude. Of course, yeah, we're going to talk about it. But first, we're going to yeah. play. Time to let it go, and then let's fucking spill the beans to everybody, everybody about your new album that you're rocking out with. All right, yeah, great. time to let it go on off, and here we go. I'm a human being. God damn it! My life has value.
Gentile and man white. There's room for everyone. That song is definitely way more punk rock than your your first song. So you guys, the, you guys are super funny because he's you guys are still smoking weed over there. You guys are yeah. smoking, I'm like, and I was saying earlier, I was laughing. I didn't wasn't gonna say it, but but you know, Stevie's over there, like arms crossed, kind of looking around, like, am I still on a podcast? What's going on over here? And, and Paulie's just talking away, having a great yeah. old time. That is so fucking funny. I love that shit, man. So you, guys, you guys met over weed, huh? We met at a festival um, in um, Ireland. I was in a different band at the time. And uh, I walked backstage and there was like a circle of people surrounding Stevie. And he was balancing <laughs> a, a on his chin. Stevie can balance. If he can lift it, he can balance it on his chin. Really? Yeah. He, I, I've given him like $6,000 guitars in front of a sea of people. And he balanced. So the whole are we gonna time. are we gonna see you on America's Got Talent <laughs> balancing shit on your chin? Maybe, maybe. Balance <laughs> <laughs> Dave, our mm. bass player, on my chin for about <laughs> eight seconds. Yeah, that is well, a fucking talent, man. People just naturally have, I guess. Well, I seen this happening backstage, and I says, "Fuck, I need to meet this man." <laughs> and I says, "Hey." What else can you balance on your chin? And he says, "If I can lift it, I can balance it." So. I, I looked over my shoulder and there was a push bike. I says, can you balance this? And he goes, yeah. And he balanced it. And then I says, do you want to go smoke some weed? And he says, I have a big lump of hash. <laughs> and I said, well, I have some nice weed. Let's go smoke. And the rest is history. And, what, 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 now, what, would you guys still be friends if he said, I got some heroin. Let's go do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I <laughs> hey, happy Thanksgiving. Don't do heroin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On off and the last spot with Sebastian do not approve of heroin usage, but we do no. support marijuana. 
We're fine yeah. with that. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk about your new album. Because you guys got some big shit going on right now, I feel. And we, we've talked about it over the past few weeks. And so, when is it coming out? Who recorded it or who's producing it? And all that good stuff. Well, uh, we're recording actually in a studio in Sacramento called J Street uh, Recording Studios. It's owned by Brian Wheat from Tesla. Um, we're recording with Brian Wheat. Brian is a amazing dude. He, um, you know, to to work with a legend of such a caliber of that, like the studio, the facility itself is multi million dollar recording facility. And then you throw in a, a guy with so much experience like Brian. You know, every song he has suggested something that has stayed, and um, his methods of recording are definitely quick and fast and um, it's exactly what our band needed because our last couple of records you know we didn't have someone in the room going no <laughs> don't do that no. yeah. yeah well not so much like no, we, we were overdoing it you know um, Brian will tell you like you know we were recording for two weeks there for the last two weeks and we got about five songs done and there's been times in past albums because I think this is our what, fifth or sixth album I think so um you know there's been times in the past where you overdo it you'll sing the song fucking 12 times and it's like then you're going through the song 12 times to find the best of the best and you, you, but, you know, okay honestly you I'll, you cannot if it's just your band and you're hearing your own music that you wrote and you go through it 12 times you're not going to catch where you need to change something because you wrote it in your head. You already know what it sounds like and someone else you need an outside perspective to help you change the song. You really do. Well, that, that's where Brian... But I think Brian's best power is going around and going, you, you got it. Like, you know? And I, I think, especially with On Off, with this album, the songs are prepared exactly like they're where they need to be when you're going into the studio. So there's, the band is sometimes going into the studio and the, the songs aren't finished or the lyrics aren't completely there or the, the whole album isn't wrote or there's, there's some kind of excuse. But this, and even with us, this is the first album we, I think, went in and everything is ready, you know? So how, how did you guys get hooked up? Uh, how did you guys get hooked up with, with that recording studio, with Brian? Um... So rewind to 2017 and um, the Reborn album that we released with Keep That Fire Born and Time to Let It Go and so, stuff. Um, you know, we had been playing a lot around California and, you know, these made men, I'm saying this recently on another podcast, like Brian's a made man, like he's the bass player from Tesla, he's hung out with Aerosmith, Motley Crue, you name it, you know, they've turned he's done it and um, he's one of many made men that reached out um, about on off and were interested and intrigued about where the fuck did this three piece Irish band come from right and why and why and how are they making so much noise right now independently and um, yeah because you guys have done a lot of I saw you guys you guys did an interview like on a good morning Sacramento or something like that one of those local stations uh Right, like on a news station. Yeah, or something? Well, the, the thing is now it's just, it's strange to say, Sebastian, but we're kind of a regular on Fox and Channel Thirteen and these kind of good the morning TV shows and fuck, like who, who'd have thought three Irish guys would be on there tasting book doing a burger tasting competition? That is so fucking cool, man. That is well, so neat, though. You gotta admit that is pretty neat that you're doing that. You yeah, know? but we, we the Irish charm works in many ways. But, um, <laughs> Lucky Brian, time, right? Yeah. Brian reached out, I think, back in two thousand, early two thousand seventeen, and was he was about to go on tour with Death Leopard and um, Six, and they were doing this big North American powerhouse. <laughs> anyway, long story cut short, um, he invited me and Stevie down to the studio to give him the new album. And basically, we went off. We went. And, um, yeah, he, he basically didn't really dig the recording of it. He loved the songs, but he thought the recording was a bit flat, you know? And then 
to be honest, at the time, nobody was going to tell us anything. We thought we knew everything, but, sure. you know, when you listen to it. Well, like, okay, so like someone like me telling you guys, hey, that fucking sucks, or don't record mm -hmm. the, that doesn't like mean anything. But when you got a guy from Tesla telling you, dude, that shit fucking sucks, even though it doesn't suck, you're going to fucking listen to him. Because yeah. he obviously knows what he's doing, and you're going to take his opinion as a validated statement. Well, it's it's tough, you know, when you put so much time into recording an album, and then, um, you know, you finally get it where people can listen to, and then somebody turns around and goes, hey, do you want to re-record the whole thing again? I'll make it sound better. How do you fucking answer that? Like, you, you turn around and you go, no. Really, I just, <laughs> right. I just, eight months recording this and you want me to do it again. But, you know, we ended up, he went on that big tour and then um, we, a couple of months later we reconvened, he invited me back to the studio and we, we had a conversation and I just told him out straight, I said, look, let me write more music. I, I don't like to go back in time. And then, um, you know, we released that album then in 2017 because it, we felt it was ready. And we end up touring all over the West Coast yeah. for fucking nearly three years. And then COVID slaps us in, in the face. Yep, so, everybody. You know, this new album is um, has definitely been inspired by the break. And, uh, you know, this, this, whole this whole podcast started because of COVID. Like, I wasn't doing shit. I was doing a... So much cool shit before fucking COVID happened. COVID came. I lost all kinds of contracts. I, like, yeah. literally, dude. I was building neighborhoods. I all kinds yeah. of shit. COVID came. Boom. I'm sitting at home. My wife's like, you better do something. I was like, I guess I'll go find a job. But you know what? Because of COVID, I started this podcast. Yeah, and awesome. I'm an entrepreneur, so, like, I grew really fast. And, you know, I get to have you guys on the show and a bunch of other bands. So, COVID, yeah. as bad as it is... Look, you guys are now recording a new album. I'm doing this podcast. We get to talk. So if you could take any positives away from COVID, would it be your new album coming out? Well, I think the positive... Um, we don't we don't have a set date for the album, but I know it's going to open up a lot of people's minds. Each song... There's 11, there's 11 tracks on it, Sebastian, and each song has a definite uh, message. Um, Sometime in 2021, though, right? It's coming out in 2021, yeah. Sometime in 2021, it's coming out. I cannot wait to hear what's... I'm going to play your last song from your 2017 album real quick. This is an old one, all right. But, 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 I do, I do want to say, what is your favorite song off your new album? Both of you, because uh, you guys might have different ones. Uh, Paulie, what's yours? Stevie, what's yours? New favorite song off the new album? Um, my my favorite one is one we haven't recorded yet, um, and it's called "Left on the Moon." Left on the Moon. Yeah, and it's a song. It's a it's a crazy song about a uh, a one one way trip where you can't really come back from. Okay, I'm excited to hear that, Stevie. What's yours? My favorite song is a song called B Y O D, which stands for Bring Your Own Drugs. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a fast, in-your-face punk rock song with you, which you would love the drumming from. Oh, oh do I love, I love fast-paced punk rock drums. It's like my favorite, favorite, favorite thing ever. <laughs> All right, and let's, on that note, let's play Backseat Lover. I'm going to ask you guys some band shout-outs. Get some in your head while we're playing the song. Then we're yeah. going to end the podcast. So here we go with Backseat Lover. So oh. 
at the very end you go huh! and then you did you did a huh! so I guess I don't need to tell you that favorite bands local bands that you know from either Ireland or from the Sacramento area that you want to give a shout out to right now well uh huge shout out to Crown Rose there's a band in um, Sacramento I suppose they're killing it I think musically and visually um, check out Crown Rose on Instagram because, you know, definitely up to date with um, what it takes to be a band with visual and audio um, in today's market. But yeah, I know there's loads of bands. Ghost Town Rebellion, when I listened, I was driving um, home from a rehearsal there a couple of weeks ago and I, I was listening to your pod with Sean and... Uh, you guys all of a sudden started talking about me, so I'm returning the favor, Sean. How's it going, bud? <laughs> nice one for the cool, you know, shout out back then. And we, we always love touring with Ghost Town Rebellion, and we've been up and down more more times than I can count. So, um, I don't know, Steve, you, you, plenty of bands we, um, I guess, have toured with and helped out, and they've helped us out. The Elusive Furs, I love. I don't know if you've heard of them. The Elusive Furs. I've never heard of them, but I'll check them out. Any band you guys say, I am definitely going to uh, check out because I think you guys are absolutely fantastic. If someone wants to buy you guys' merchandise, they want to check you guys out. Do you have a website? Do you have... I, I know you have Facebook and all that good stuff, but where can yeah. they find you? The main website is uh, onoffrock.com. That's the main web website you can get uh, merchandise and stuff like that from. One, one last band I forgot, which are he's an amazing guy, and they just got a video going recently, which the video's great too. Um, they're called Three SD, and we've been rocking with them for years. Two cool bands we met: Three SD and Roswell, in the show years ago at the Blue Lamp. And then, but yeah, Three SD released a video recently, and if you like Tool and all of that kind of crazy production. Go check these guys out. They're fucking amazing. Absolutely, man. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for being on the show. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody, yeah. everybody in the world, whether they celebrated or not. Happy Thanksgiving to, Thanksgiving. to everybody. And Happy hope, Thanksgiving to everyone. You're right, man. Have hope, a good day. Hopefully yeah. everybody enjoys their families and their friends and their loved ones. I guess have a, a fun day tomorrow and not worry about COVID. I hope people aren't 
I mean, people are going to be concerned about it, but today about love and family and feasting. And so we love that. I want to, <laughs> yeah, I want to get, and pie. I want to give a shout out right now to Nothing Short of Tragic, uh, a favorite band of mine that helped, that actually wrote this outro song for me. So, Hi. Eric Bowen, Nothing Short of Tragic, thank you again for doing this for me. I don't want you guys to go anywhere, stay right there. Thank you everyone for sending me your music, let me play your music, emailing me, giving me shout outs, and your friend requests, liking my page, all that good stuff. We're trying to make it a little bit better on Instagram for you guys. That may be the new way to go. Peace out, happy Thanksgiving, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.